Welcome to another episode of DD on the Spot. As always, I'm your host, Ryan Johnson. And before we get into it with our guest here today, well, first of all, I don't know if you'll recognize our guest because the last time that we had her on, she was, first of all, she was in her off season. And then second of all, she had red hair, but we have Brittany Bull back on the podcast. This is going to be the last time that she probably hears her name like that, Brittany Bull, because she is getting married in a couple of weeks. So we got to say congratulations for that. But, you know, there, there's just so much to talk about since we last had her on because we had her on pre-COVID, everyone. She's one of the the guests that it took longer than a year that I tell people to come back on. But um, it makes for an even more interesting conversation because of how the world has changed since we last had her on. But um, yeah, she's on to just give us an update on everything that she's been up to. But most importantly, she's our current guest. Brittany, thank you so much for coming back on. Hey, man, it's so good to be back. I, I really appreciate coming back on. And, you know, it's uh, there has there's been a whole lot going on and you've been a busy guy and you look different, too. So. Yeah, I, I grew out the beard. I'll tell you, I'll give you the reason for that at the end of the podcast. But yeah, I've been I've been growing a little bit of a different look myself, but. I mean, good God. I mean, it's been so long since we had you on that everything's happened. What has this last basically like two years almost <laughs> that since we've last had you on been like for you? Well, um, you know, I took some time off from competing. Um, ultimately, I took pretty much the last three years off. I think uh, the last show I did before this year was the 2018 Chicago Pro. Um, I placed third in it. And then I just decided I was like going to take. 2019 off to regroup, grow, refocus, uh, build some more business, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then 2020 rolls around. I felt, um, well, and also I had some surgery done in 20 at the end of 2018. So 2019 was spent recovering. So 2020 was supposed to be like my year to come back and kind of make, make another mark. And then, um, then the Rona happened. <laughs> You know, it's it's crazy because my mom and I took a trip to New York literally on leap day. We were there February 28th, 29th, March 1st, and came back on the 2nd. And then what, like everything like went into, you know, snafu crazy uh, on like the 13th or something like that. So we visited, we visited every tourist location there possibly was. And so if there was a chance that I was going to get the COVID, like I was in it, I was in the thick. And then when we got back two days later, I was so sick. I was so sick. And I called the teledoc and they told me, well, it doesn't really sound like you've got COVID. Like it just sounds like the flu. We'll call you in some antibiotics. A couple of days after taking antibiotics, I, I felt better and I was good. Um, and then after that, the world did it just changed and shut down. And, um, you know, I was lucky enough that even though my gym was shut down to the public, um, the owner let me and the other trainers continue to train ourselves. I'm very thankful that he did that. But at the same time, food was hard to find. Um, just the stress of it all, the wondering of what if, like, I know everybody went through some anxiety with it. And ultimately, like, I've always had the the mindset of if COVID is what gets me, if that is what takes me out of the the link, then that's that's it. I mean, I could go to the doctor tomorrow and find out that I have any number numerous forms of cancer that's going to kill me in six months. You know, so COVID hit me in a way. I don't think it really hit me as hard as I know it, it hit some people. I was very fortunate that financially, like I am my own boss and my clients. Um, did not want it to get in the way of their progress and their results. So we were able to continue to train. I was able to continue with my clients. So I was very fortunate through the whole thing, uh, much more fortunate than I know a lot of people were. No, and for me personally, I mean, when I got that second shot of the vaccine, I have never been more cold in my entire life. I had the chills for like one whole day, but then I was totally fine with it. And I was like, how is that even a thing? Because literally, yeah, literally in my bed right back there. So I have sweaters back there as well. I had about five sheets of, I had about five layers of sheets on and I, I put all the sweaters on top of those sheets too to try to keep me warm. I was still as frozen as I was and then I went downstairs and I had some Capri Suns and then I just basically wrapped myself in like 10 blankets. And then, yeah, I didn't even get any sleep that night. I, we only had Capri Suns downstairs. So I was just basically chilling with Capri Suns the whole day, the whole day. Basically, I, 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 I just, I would take them out and I put them in a little cup and then I just, you know, put some ice in them. But yeah, that was an, that was an interesting time. And I mean, yeah, for me. For me too, I actually got the I actually got COVID in March when it first came out because I was at a casino, 
like a week before everything shut down and then I wasn't feeling good about a week late. So then they, that's, that could have been the only place that I got it. Cause at work, you know, no one had tested positive. And so that was in, I mean, it didn't really affect me that much because you know, I'm on the younger side and on the healthier side. So that's one of the benefits of anything of, you know, working out. But what has this whole been journey been like for you as a bodybuilder too? Because like you said, luckily you had the gyms to go work out in, but I mean, still the motivation for a lot of people when you don't have shows in the near future is kind of hard, you know, keep things on track. Well, I just, I, like I said, I, I was supposed to come back in 2020, but then I just decided, you know what? Like, I don't want to have to worry about, I mean, people were getting two weeks out from show and the show was getting canceled. Like when you prep, especially as a pro, I'm not saying anything against amateurs, but especially as a pro, like you are putting your professional for a reason. Like you're putting a whole lot of time and a whole lot of effort and a whole lot of money and just heart and blood and sweat and tears into it to get down to the wire of two weeks out or even during peak week and being told, Oh, our city is no longer allowing us to have special events. We have to cancel. So I was not going to put myself through that. I already know how I I know myself. I'm not going to put myself through that. Um, So I just decided as soon as COVID really came out and they shut everything down, I just decided that I was going to wipe my hands with 2020. I spent the time doing what I could to build myself, putting it somewhat of an off season. Um, I, the coach that I had, I had this, I, I mean, up until this, this past year, I had the same coach. And so I kind of had to have the conversation with him. Like, you know, we didn't really put into an off season. I didn't really get any direction. Um, you know, he got involved, you know, COVID got his life turned upside down too. So, and he wasn't exactly just a coach for bodybuilding. Like he has a different job. He, he was doing it because we were, we were friends. Um, so I, we had to have the conversation to make the decision that I needed to go elsewhere, but I spent all of 2020. I don't want to say I wasted it, but I didn't put into an off season what I really could have if I would have had the right direction of somebody to lead me there. Um, so, I mean, we ended up moving back out to my hometown. Um, I've lived in DFW area, uh, 10, you know, 15 years, uh, just traveling all over the DFW area, moving every year, sometimes, to, you know, every other year, uh, Denton is probably where I had stayed the longest. Um, once I moved into the RV, the first RV, which was the first um, podcast that we did. Now I'm in a brand new RV. There, there was an um, airport right by where she was living. I remember from all, that's the one thing I remember about the podcast is the <laughs> planes were flying by constantly, but I did my best to try to edit them out. Every- there was, there was we were right next to it. Now I am 200 miles from the nearest city. Um, it takes me about two and a half hours to get to Dallas. Um, I'm on family land. We have about 50 acres out in Northeast Texas. Um, it's been in my family for hundred years. Um, It's the land my grandfather was born on. My trailer sits probably about the exact spot that my grandfather was born. So um, we moved back out here. We just had to get out of the city. You know, COVID opened our eyes and just the way that everything was handled. The city started to get crazy, especially Dallas. Um, Things just started to get crazy for two people that were born and raised in the country. And, you know, we were only living in the city to, uh, as a means to an end. Like we don't have to do that anymore. Um, both of our jobs allow us to, to work remotely, or I travel in once a week, every Wednesday I drive into Dallas. And then on Thursday I leave, I stay the night and I I train all of my clients in those two days. And then I come here and I do the same thing. So, um, you know, a a lot of things have, have transitioned, but you know, now we do, we live out in the country. We love it. Um, I have two gyms that I train out here, um, out of here now. Um, I train out of raw iron, raw iron, which is in Mount Pleasant. And then I have a smaller gym, which is in Mount Vernon, which is like 15 minutes from me. And that's kind of where I do my training. They're just so different than big city gyms there. There's not the same amount of clientele. It's really easy to go in and focus on what I'm doing on what I need to get done. Oh, thank God. I thought you meant that you were like 200 miles away from like any city. So I was like, geez, how is she even going to work out? And is she doing like ranch workouts or something like that? Is that how the, is that how she looks the way that she looks? I was like, then sign me up for that. Then basically. (laughs) Yeah. And, and funny enough. So last summer, my parents did go to Dallas on vacation. 
so they were they went there they'd never been there before of course they went on a tour of jerry's world because they had to go and do that and then they then they you know went to where kennedy was shot and you know my dad's just like i don't know i think it was a good i mean i'd hear all this conspiracy theory bs afterwards after he went there and i was like dad i don't care like you can tell so i i had to deal with all that personally so you know thanks a lot dallas but um going into your journey what do you think has been one body part that you've improved on the most since we last had you on Oh, my legs. My legs have definitely come up. Um, it's been a struggle because, oh, I hate leg day. Oh, I hate leg day. I still Thank you. Day. Finally, someone else says that. I have so many of my female guests that are just like, oh, my God, I love leg day. And I was like, I hate you. Like, what are you, what are you, what are you talking to me about for? I hate leg day. I mean, who? It's one of those. And everybody's like, oh, it's love, hate. No, I just hate it. Like, I do not enjoy training legs. Um, but. That also is probably why they did do so well, because I just poured all of my hate and anger into every workout. And I did. I changed the way I trained them. Um, I tried to cut out most of the fluff and went to just like hardcore movements. Um, and it seems to have worked out, worked out well for me. So what else, could you be a little bit more specific? Because for me, I'm just taking down anyone's leg advice and I'm trying to combine it into something that works for me because being six, three, I mean, this is almost impossible for me. I mean, I literally just need to maybe just get surgically enhanced, you know, and just basically like switch legs with like Adrian Peterson or something like that. That's, that's my fall. That's my fallback plan. But so what did you do for legs? So I started doing, like I said, core lifts. I started doing hack squats. I started doing, um, which I was always doing these things. I don't want to say I started, but I was doing them, but I specifically focused on things like uh, hack squats, different variations of them, making sure that I was getting full range of motion um, on top of some like time under tensions things. Um, you know, Hyacin kind of led me into my workouts once we started prep and everything. I um, He actually specifically told me what he wanted me to do um, which was nice, which I, which I enjoyed doing. I don't have to think about anything. Um, but they were very specific movements, hack squat, leg press, um, not really any free squats. My hips are shot already. So trying to free squat is like baby giraffing all the time. Um, I don't feel like it's a very good movement for me. I feel like I can do other things and evolve better. Um, but Leg extensions were something that I probably was overdoing, um, over training. Um, so I backed off those and really focused more on, again, time under tension, really slow moving up, really slow moving down and keeping it at a constant flow instead of just moving weight. I, I had to start thinking of the motto, uh, feel the weight, don't move the weight. So. I don't know how many times I have to preach this on the podcast, but these bodybuilders are not power lifters, everyone. So anyone who just goes in there thinking like, Oh, you know, I'm just going to max out, you know, every single time and I'm going to look just like them. It's like, no, you're, you're, you're not at all. And I mean, it's just, I, I couldn't have said it better myself to though, too, that the time under tension. I mean, that is just one thing that a lot of people need to stress about. And how's your nutrition changed at all? I mean, obviously with, like you said, it was harder to get food, especially early on in the pandemic, but even as you've gotten, as things have gotten somewhat closer back to normal, have, has your nutrition changed at all from your previous preps before COVID? So we, um, not really. We were pretty basic to begin with. Um, I've always been really basic in prep. Uh, yeah, chicken, um, potato, oatmeal, eggs, rice. Um, but up until this year, so when I first got with Hyacinth, he did change. We did kind of do a complete 180 like I've been doing. Um, well, first of all, when I got with him, I had not really been treating myself Um like I should have to get to start a prep bless his heart. Like I threw him to the wolves and he started leading the pack. So, um, I told him this is what I want to do. And he got me there. So, but ultimately he took me from eating mostly chicken and potato, um, to sw He switched me to rice. We actually figured out that that did not work for me. Um, most people rice is really good for them. Like they can process that really easily. For some reason, I don't, and I'm not 100% sure why, it might be that my blood sugar naturally runs in the high 90s. I, I can get up, I can do faster cardio um, for 45 minutes and then test my blood sugar, I'm still in the 90s. So all of my family is diabetic, I just haven't made it there yet. So I don't know if maybe it just processes easier with me, but potato is potato and oatmeal is 
pretty much what we had to like switch me over to rice. I blew up on rice. Like it, I would hold so much water that it would hurt. Like my stomach would hurt. I would be so bloated that it would look like I was like four months pregnant. It was insane. And so I, as a coach, as a good coach should, he listened when I told him, let me just cut it for 24 hours and see what happens. We cut all rice for 24 hours and I dropped four and a half pounds overnight. When you're that bloated, was your fiance like, is there something we should be talking about that you should have been telling me? <laughs> so, um, he's so in tune with, with my body and prep and he sees changes that I don't anyway. So, and he, um, I tr try to keep him involved and stuff. So he knows like he's able to also help me assess like what's going on. That That is so great. And what's it like <laughs> planning a wedding while also being in competitive season? Because good God, just one of, I'm having friends that are getting married who have never touched a weight in their lives and they're going absolutely insane. And I know going through bodybuilding can kind of make people insane too, just with the prep brain. Why would you ever want to combine both of those? <laughs> so, um, <laughs> this just goes to show how amazing Jeff is anyways, but I didn't really give him an option of I'm going to do a show. Hey hon, what do you think about me wanting to do a show? No, I kind of walked in and was like, Hey, so by the way, I hired a uh, highest in this year. We're going to do a show. That is exactly how that went. Um, and so he was like, uh, but the wedding is like, you know, what about the wedding? Um, to be honest, if my mom, had not been such a rock star, it would not have gotten planned. My mom took over a lot of the things for the wedding and just ran with it. She, you know, there were certain things that I had to get done that I had to do, um, that I still have to do. <laughs> um, but she really ran with it and helped me book things and helped me find things, helped me buy things, made sure that I was marking, you know, crossing all the T's and dotting all the I's and, swirling all the J's and everything. I mean, she just knew what to do. Um, my mom, she really missed her calling as like a party planner. Um, so, but really I'm so, I'm so thankful that, that I have her because I would not have been able to do it. Not even a little bit. There were plenty of times when I told her and Jeff, like, I can't think about this right now. Like I'm four weeks out. Like I can't, I can't deal with that right now. Like you want me to, you want me to pick what you want me to pick flowers? I don't even think about flowers right now. You want me to pick cake? I can't even taste cake right now. Okay. So, you know, there were plenty of times when I had to have them make the decisions for me or, or take the reins on it. And they really stepped up to the plate. So I can't really take any credit for, <laughs> for planning any of my wedding other than saying, <clears throat> I want my colors to be navy and copper and rose gold. That was it. So I have two more wedding questions just because I'm the hopeless romantic in me. So first of all, what is the proposal story? If it's a good, if it's a good, I love, I'm just a sucker for those stories. Um, long story short, we were sitting out here on our land and I was about to leave to go to Denton to clients and it was just me and him. I walk out the door and he says, uh, Hey babe. And I turn around and I'm like, Oh, what? Because I'm trying to walk out the door and I'm, you know, being all big. What if he just goes, oh, never mind. You can go. Then. <laughs> he's standing in the door and he's like, um, so I was just wondering if you, uh, like wanted to be my wife. And so it, it was just, um, Jeff isn't really good about being put on the spot. He doesn't like being the center of attention. And so just, um, the fact that he didn't just kind of walk up and be like, uh, here you go is a, a big step for him. So, <laughs> um, but it was, it was nice. Just us being out here on our land where we're fixing to build our house under our tree. It was just, it was us. It was very us. It wasn't, we would never were meant to have some big proposal in front of all these people, which is totally me too. For me, it would just be like, Hey, we're going down to the courthouse right now. And we're getting married, you know, take your stuff. That's, that's just me. But you know, I'll, I, I'll have someone that will want to do all that crap and I'll be like, okay, you're in charge of all of it. But Jeff, here's what you got to do though. You don't do it right before she's about to train clients. Cause then that messes up her entire day. You cannot tell me that she was mentally ready for like the rest of the day to train. Yeah. Now I have to yeah, exactly. Leave. Overnight right now. Yeah. Like, what am I supposed to do with that? Yeah, absolutely. But Hey, that, that's awesome. And lastly, can we see the ring? It's so dirty right now. Hey, that is awesome. That is a good one. So dirty right now. That is a good one. Um, but it's, yeah, you know, if it were up to me, honestly, we probably would have just uh, eloped to some tropical location with 
friends and any family that could make it, but my grandparents are still alive. Um, and my grandparents, uh, I lived with them until I was nine when my mom finished school and everything. We're all very close. My grandma is not getting on a plane to leave Red River County. And my grandpa would if he were able to, but he's like 87 years old. I mean, they're they're older and stuff. And with COVID and everything, there's just no way. Like, we're lucky that we're getting, we're lucky that our friends and family don't care enough that they're all coming. I mean, we probably have um, probably about 100 people coming. So, wow. Aren't you Miss Popular, basically? But no, no, I'm just saying. But like, so I have the same thing. Like, I have one grandpa left out of my grandparents, and he's in Nebraska, and he only comes up here once a year, and that's for Christmas. And he's getting to the old point now where, like, he'll just sit in a chair in the living room, and he'll only get up once to, like, go to sleep, basically. Then, And then he's just – but, I mean, like, a Korean War veteran. Like, he's one of those old school guys. But I love that your grandma – I mean, I love those type of old people where it's like, I'm not leaving this damn place ever or stuff like that. I mean, that that's just that old school mentality, and that, that's, you know. If she can't see it from her TV <laughs> – and it, she can't see it in Red River County. She's cool. Like, she's all right. So I wanted them to be able to be here, to be a part of it. Um, you know, like I said, that I lived with him, you know, till I was nine. So I want my grandfather. I'm, the fact that he's still around, I'm almost, I mean, I'm about to be 38 years old and he's still around to, you know, walk me partially down the aisle and stuff. Like, those are things that I don't want to give up just to elope and not. Go you should just that. be carrying him down the aisle. Come on, you're a bodybuilder, for God's sake. <laughs> I probably will have to a little bit. I'm going to have to like have a strong arm on, but, um, but I actually have three dads. So wow. yeah. So I've got three dads walking me down the aisle. Those Christmases must've been insane then having three dads. Well, I have a, I have my stepdad who yeah. my mom is married to now. Mm -hmm. I have my biological father who is, you know, still around and then my grandfather. So I mean, I kind of have that. So our uncle lived with us when I was growing up too, because my parents worked a lot. So then he would be the one he worked nights. So then he would be the one that would like get us ready for school and stuff like that. So I kind of have like, I consider him like my second father too, basically like, like that as well. But I mean, uh, well, father not, does not just go one up. Yeah, that's for sure. absolutely. Well, and I was one last thing. So how did you find a wedding dress? Because obviously when it comes to finding wedding dresses, bodybuilding isn't really a category that they make wedding dresses for. Um, <laughs> So we had to buy a size 10 and it got cut down to about a size six or so. Um, they cut, so my alterations lady, we, we didn't cut anything off the top, but she grabbed about two inches on each side of my waist and took that out. So um, I actually just got it back. I did my bridal portraits last night um, and it fits like perfect. I actually could like stand to put on about two more pounds in the junk if I could have like two more pounds of booty, like, I mean, I have to train legs like the day. Do before some squats, the wedding. do some squats or before you'll be fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just do a couple of squats before the wedding. I'll be fine. It'll fill it all out. So, but I've actually had to stay in like prep mode diet. That's what I was going to say. I was like, that's giving you even more motivation to keep up with this. So I, everyone should just get married then before the, before their big show season really then basically. I got my dress sized when I was three weeks out. So I told Hyacinth. I you you like, couldn't have waited until you were like two months out or something like that, or no. you couldn't have done it sooner. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I, I want I wanted to when I when those curtains open, I wanted Jeff's mouth to go. So I couldn't do that. You know, I mean, I'm sure I would have for him. You know, he loves me no matter what. But me, I wanted to know. You know, so well. At least the attention's all going to be on you because I have a friend who also she does bodybuilding i mean she's she's in very good shape and she was a groom or she was a bride's not a bridesmaid she was a one of the it's like a groomsman but she's not or yeah she was a bridesmaid yeah she's not the see i'm with weddings blah 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 i don't even care but anyway so i told her i was like you can't go sleeveless because everyone's just going to be staring at you basically and then and then she did and then she got complaints afterwards that everyone was staring too much at her basically then and stuff like that so i was like okay hey that that goes with the territory but yeah, and I mean, going back into, you know, the bodybuilding aspect, I mean, what was this season like with the shows that you were doing? So I really, um, I had a good time this season. Um, honestly, like, I didn't really get the placings and stuff that I really had hoped for. But at the same time, with everything that I had going on, um, I always put 110% in. Like, I, if I'm going to prep for a show, like, I'm going to do it 100%. But when your focus is also being... Something has to give. Everything has to give. When you're planning for a wedding, when you're doing, you know, traveling as much as I do for work and stuff, things, you know, 
mentally and physically sometimes don't snap together. Like we had a struggle up until probably the, like eight weeks out. Um, my hormones were all over the place. Like I, I went and got my blood work done. Like my testosterone was like a four. My estrogen was like a five. Like I had nothing going on. My, my T3 was low. So we could, it was one of those things where like, why am I dieting so hard and I'm working so hard and nothing's happening. So up until eight weeks out, it was kind of a struggle physically um, with my body. But once we got all that going, it really just started to roll. And I started to recognize myself again. Like, this is what my prep body looks like. Um, so, you know, I went in knowing that I wanted to do the Texas Pro. Um, I didn't really put it out there that I was doing it. I kind of told people I was just getting ready for the wedding. I wanted to look good in my wedding dress. Um, I guess I wanted to kind of for lack of better terms, dark horse it in, you know, just kind of go in without anybody giving you pressure about it, expecting anything of you. It was totally different than how I'd ever went into any other prep. Um, and I really enjoyed it. Like I said, there was no pressure from anybody. Nobody was asking, so how's prep going? Like, oh, you know, when you're in prep, people expect things of you. People expect you to be in prep mode. Um, if anything, if you're ever in a bad mood, they blame it because you're in prep. Well, maybe it's just because you're being an, ass. like, you know, it's not because I'm in, it has nothing to do with being in prep, but if, when you're in prep, people automatically think, oh, you're just prepping out. Like you're being a, you know, so, um, at least it's an excuse though, to act like that. I mean, cause then you can kind of get away with it a little bit more though, at least. <laughs> yeah, a little bit, but you know, yeah. Um, but so it was it was fun to go in and not have any expectations. Um, when the list came out and it came out that I was actually doing it, there were a lot of people who already kind of assumed that I was getting ready for something. And since Texas never has women's physique pro shows, um, I think they all just kind of assumed that was what it was going to be. Um, I was really excited that Texas had my division because it gave my family and friends and clients and people a chance to come see me do what I do because, you know, I started doing a lot of routine choreography um, and it gave me an opportunity to showcase um, what I do in person to all the people that just see me talk about it. So they kind of got to see me walk the walk, not just talk the talk. Um, so that was really fun. Um, and then going into Arizona, that was a total just last minute decision. Like as soon as um, there were some things that happened at the Texas Pro that kind of threw me off and made me feel like I didn't get the full experience of what I'd really hoped for. Um, and it had nothing to do with my placing like at all whatsoever. It just, uh, my music on my finals routine got messed up. Um, so I didn't really get to do my finals routine. They were all cut short. Our prejudging routines were cut short. So I just wanted something more. Um, so as soon as I got off stage, Jeff was like, we're doing Arizona. And I said, are we now? Because I had not mentally prepared to be in prep for another four weeks. Um, I had already been prepping for 20. So I was like, well, we'll talk to Hyacin. And as soon as I talked to Hyacin, he was like, I'm so glad you you're wanting to do this show. I like, I think we can really, really do some damage. So, you know, we went in hoping that I would get in a top three or top five placing. Um, I was pushed out. I actually got seventh place in that show. Um, it's one of those where I'm not a hundred percent sure why I got seventh. Um, but you know, that's, we not, you don't always will, you know, you not, you will not always know why you did, but um, you know, I feel that we could have done better that we should have done better. Um, but the consensus for both shows is I need a bigger back. So that's, I mean, at least they didn't say I needed more legs. <laughs> that is oh, the if thing. they did, I would have just been like, okay, I'm done. Whatever. That, yep. Yep. <laughs> that I've really ever received is you need more legs. Like you have to bring your legs up to match your upper body. So now I've done that. Now I really just have to get the depth in my back. It's not even necessarily wit. I have to get dimensional now. So we're going to row row and row and row until I cannot row no more. In the words of the great PJ Fleck, the golden gopher football head coach, row the boat. But uh, please tell me that you are at least considering having Here Comes the Bride be your music that you play when you go out in your routine. 
Um, no. So, <laughs> but um, we did do uh, my suit was my wedding colors. So and I got a ton of um, I got a, a ton of compliments on my suit. It was very creative. It was very unique. It was unlike any suit that I've honestly ever seen on an IFBB stage. Um, and I got so many compliments on it. So my, my suit sponsor, which is sweet revenge, she always does an incredible job for my suit. So that was kind of my homage to my wedding, but, and my, my music choice was this woman's work by Maxwell. So, and it was kind of like a little tribute to Jeff. Like he puts up with a lot, like during prep, um, you know, he has to sit back and watch, watch me pull myself into a mode where a, a dark place where a lot of people don't get to see, like when you're dating somebody who's in prep, you see things that the outside world doesn't see. You experience the side of them that the outside world hopefully never has to experience. Um, and they really, he really did take the responsibility of reeling me back in when those times were, were hard. And so when I hear that song, it just makes me kind of, kind of think of him. So you know, I tried to, all that, but I thought- I've always said the unsung heroes of this podcast are the significant others of the competitors that we have on. Uh, it, yeah. No, I mean, it, and it's, it's not even close. Yeah. If I was going to do a bride song though, it would have been white wedding by Billy Idol. Yep. It's okay. So are you having for your first dance, do you guys have a song picked out or anything? Um, so we can't figure out what, <laughs> no, we can't figure out what song we want for our first dance, but, um, We've decided I'm walking down the aisle. Everlong is our song by Foo Fighters. So the acoustic version of Everlong. That is awesome. Yeah. And then when they announce us, husband and wife will play the jam version. Yeah. You know? so that was that was in a movie somewhere. I forgot what I forgot what it was where they played like the acoustic. It wasn't for a wedding though. But yeah, I love. Yeah, I absolutely love that song myself. But one, no, we don't know what we're gonna do for our first name. Hey, hey, it's better. Hey, you might as well just wing it then. But one thing that I did want to talk to you about because I mean this has been such a sort of shocking year in the bodybuilding community with like all the stuff that's been going on with you know the deaths and you know just uh, just how interesting things have been and what has been your reaction to like that? Because it seems like this has finally hit a breaking point where like, cause everyone knows that as the years have gone on, the judges have wanted a more and more extreme look and they want it more conditioning. And it seems like maybe it's reached a boiling point now where people sort of realize that, you know, it's becoming more and more dangerous and that they might need to t- dial things back a little bit. But what was your reaction? Like when, you know, all this news was breaking of all this stuff that was happening. Well, you know, like to be honest, like it's not really anything new things like this have been going on in the bodybuilding world for years upon years. Like people like Jamie Pender have been speaking out about it for years. Um, especially like PED protocols with girls and stuff. Um, ultimately I think it's very sad. I think it's very unfortunate. Um, I am a believer that we are all adults. Um, we all have, the ability to say no. Yeah, I don't nobody nobody's that. pointing a gun at these competitors, everyone. Yeah. Nobody nobody is putting a gun to your head saying, you better take this or however, as a prep coach, as a coach myself, I also understand that seeds can be planted and those seeds will turn into gardens. And sometimes those gardens are toxic. Um they if you tell a competitor, yes, you can win if you take trend this masterone or this, or if you shut off all your estrogen, or if you take Winstrol, or if you diuret, take this diuretic. I mean, if you tell them and you plant those seeds, then those seeds are going to grow. And we don't do this to not win. So if you find somebody who is already, I don't want to say mentally weak, but it does because you don't have to be mentally weak to be, pushed into those things, but it is much easier when somebody has that desire and need and want to win so bad that that's all that they can see and it blinds them to their inhibitions. So I do feel that as a responsible coach, you are dealing with people's health. You should not be suggesting they use things and do things and take protocols that you know are dangerous to their health. So it's a two-sided coin. Both people, both parties are responsible. Unfortunately, one party isn't here to tell their side of the story and to tell what the truth is. One is, and it would be different. I, I feel like I would also feel different about it if it was just one person, 
if it was just one random person, one lone person of this, you know, this specific coach, then it would be different, but it's not, it's multiple, it's multiple people. It's multiple people now speaking out, um, about things. It doesn't mean he's a horrible coach with everybody. Like it doesn't mean that he does that with everybody, but not everybody also has the, not, or not everybody is also stand. They don't stand up for themselves and say no either. They just go along with the flow. I've told Hyacinth, I will not do these things, period. You have to take a stand. You have to set boundaries or else in this industry, there are, there are just as many coaches who want the win more than your health just as much as there are athletes who want the win more than their health. Yeah. I'm Well, I consider it sort of like, <coughs> excuse me, I have something dry in my throat, but I was thinking like being a podcast host, like if I was a coach out of all the guests that I've had on, I have thought, yeah, there are a handful of guests that like, if I just told them to take something, they would probably just do it just because, you know, those are, there are certain type of people that just don't want to have any responsibility. And they're just like, go with the, just tell me what to do. But for me, it's just like, hey, let, let people do what they want to do. I, for me, the only thing I preach is do your research. Do your research, study things, do not go into things blindly. And I know sometimes we have young people on the podcast who think that they're just immortal and they think nothing bad's ever going to happen to me. So like they just go with it, but just do your research. And I mean, if that's, that's the only piece of advice that I really have for that, because every, again, like you said, everyone's an adult, everyone has their own decisions. You still got to put the work in. You still got to go to the gym. You still got to have the proper nutrition. There's not one pill that, you know, just, you just magically take. And believe me, when that does come out, I will be one of the first people lining up to take it, to take it. Yeah, absolutely. You know, Hey, I just train once a week, basically then or something like that. And just do just just do cardio, but yeah, I mean, j just sign me up. But I mean, speaking of cardio too, what has your relationship been like with cardio? Because you do look different from the last time that we had you on. So you've probably been doing a little bit more cardio. I am. Um, yeah, we actually have a stair climber out in our shed. Um, and here in Texas, it gets up to, you know, a hundred and, you know, whatever, 105 or whatever. Well, inside said shed that's now insulated. Um, some days it would be 125 degrees and I would be in there stepping in a hoodie and sweat. So I put I put in the miles this year on cardio for sure. The gauntlet and I have I mean it's it's uh it's an old school like commercial grade. It's the step is like an eight inch step, I think. So it's a it's a big mama jama, but she's a I did cardio. Um I got up to like forty minutes in the morning and thirty minutes at night at the peak of it. Um but that was maybe for like a week or two. It's always been steady stasis, low impact, steady stasis. Um, we did hit for about two weeks and I lost like three pounds really fast. And he was like, whoa, go back to steady stasis. So that's kind of where, where we hang out. But I'm still doing cardio. I probably will tell him like I'd like to continue to do cardio, even if it's just walking because of the routine in it. Um, I thrive in routine. Once I get my routine going, it's something that I can do every day. Like I naturally will wake up every day at five and five thirty now because that's what I'm used to, to get my cardio in. So, you know, it's just what I naturally kind of do. I like the routine. It makes it easier for me. I woke up to your text messages literally saying like, Hey, can we postpone this a little bit little, to like half an hour? So that just give you my sleep schedule right now. So yeah, a little, little bit different, but how little different with 125 degrees wearing a sweater and sweat. How the hell do you even do it? For there's some videos on my IG um, and you can tell, like I've got some videos too, where I'm, I do cardio and then I pose like I would pose after my cardio in the shed and I would record myself and you can just see just, just me sweating and dripping. Um, but in my mind, the whole time I'm doing that, I think the stage is hot. It is so hot on that stage. Those lights are so hot. Is it 120 degrees? I don't know. It feels like it in the moment for sure. Um, and even when we were in Arizona, it was a very small stage, like an auditorium style stage. And so the lights are right there in your face. And we were out there posing. And if I honestly don't think if I had not practiced the way I did, I don't know if I would have been able to help hold it together the way I do. Because, and maybe that's why I do pose as well as I do on stage because I practice in extreme conditions like that. Yeah. No. And that's, 
more power to you. I mean, if I, I would, I'm just saying for your extremes, I would never go out in negative 40 degrees and, you know, try to do like a workout and posing. That's just, that's just me. But Hey, you know, just doing that, I mean, alone is in of itself. But I asked you this question last time, but obviously it's going to be a different answer this time because you were, you were in your off season the last time we talked. I mean, like I said last time being a bodybuilder you're sort of like a mini celebrity where people just you seem to get a lot more of attention how do you deal with that now especially the way that you look right now because even if you like walk out in public i mean you are going to get stares and people are just like oh wow that's that's interesting how have you been dealing with that so it doesn't i always have to remember and tell myself that i am not the normal like i'm not normal like in my world i'm normal um in my world and in in our industry, I'm actually like less than normal, you know, like, I mean, bodybuilders are the norm, but in the outside world, like I always have to tell myself, like people don't quite, they don't understand. They don't know how to take me in. Um, so when they stare, um, I also like, I guess a little piece of, of every bodybuilder asks for it. If you walk out in public like this, Oh, I would be, I would be posing every time someone stared. I'd just be like, Oh, you like what you see basically stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah expect to be looked at you know when I go out in public like I don't walk around like a be all slouch and like <laughs> with this like I hold myself upright like I want to present my hard work to everybody because this right here somebody might look at it and go I want to look like that like I need her to show me how to look like that and it might completely change their life so sometimes yes it's annoying you can always tell when there's those creepy people that are doing it to be creepy. Like, can I touch you? No, no, you can't touch me. You can admire from afar, but do not touch me. Um, you know, or the ones who, how much do you bench? Because they don't understand what it is that we do. So it's like the only thing that they can think of. Um, you know, so I just do, I remind myself that not everybody understands how to take bodybuilding and they don't quite understand how to react to it or what to make of me. And, you know, especially nowadays, like I could be a guy for all they know. Like they, I know that some of them, you can tell when they're trying to figure out like, is this, is that a guy or a girl? I have had to tell people I'm a girl, like I'm a woman, always have been, always will be, you know, but someone just be like, someone just be like, is that Caitlyn Jenner over there? (laughs) (laughs) today's world it's not uncommon like I could be a boy like I could have been born a man so you can tell if they're trying to figure it out so again people just some people just don't understand and that's okay I have had that moment myself I'm not gonna lie not with bodybuilders but just with some people where you're just like are they a guy just just because if you know you gotta like talk to them you're just like I don't want to like misgender them or anything like that so you just got it in your brain you just got to be like looking for signs of whatever sexuality they are or whatever sex they are so I'm really bad. Like my parents taught me manners. So I think say things like, yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Yep. Um, and so I have caught myself. I Especially on the phone me, too. Yeah. That's the worst one. Yeah. It's hard for me to be polite like that now because I've actually gotten, you know, uh, I'm not like, you know, uh, I'm a ma'am. I'll be like, yes, sir. He's like, I'm a ma'am. Well, sorry. No disrespect. Sorry, you know, ma'am. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Whatever you want to be called is what I'll call you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. It's it's an interesting time to be alive in. <laughs> you know, absolutely. But what advice would you have for someone who's just looking to get started in bodybuilding, especially with, you know, everything that's been going on and just just with the way that the sport seems to be going? You have to do it for yourself. You can't do it for any other reason. You can't do it for trophies or you can't allow the placings to validate you. If you're going to get into bodybuilding to validate how you feel for yourself or to put a worth on yourself, you're probably going to end up doing more damage than good. Um, Also, find a good coach. I do not recommend, you know, I I tell people that I did my first bikini prep uh, when I first started by myself. It's not something that I recommend. I recommend you finding a coach, a good coach. And when I say a good coach, I mean somebody who is going to invest in you and your health at the same time, who wants good results for you, who you're not just going to hear from when you check in, um, who really does want what's best for you in the industry. And maybe somebody who actually um, does it is in the industry for a living. Like there are plenty of people who do something else and then coach on the side. I recommend finding somebody who does the coaching, like coaching is their money maker because then they have no other outside distractions for it. 
Um, and lastly, probably exactly what you said, do your research, understand what you're getting yourself into. Um, bodybuilding is not for the faint of heart. It's not just about lifting weights. It's not just about eating salad. Like you, there's so much more that goes into it. So much more drive and heart and mental power that it's, it's just so much more than just lifting weights and just dieting. So I think a lot of people get into it and they're not really, you know, they don't research shows. And so they show up, they don't, they don't know how the registration process for shows go. They don't even know like what their posing requirements are. So if you're going to decide to get into bodybuilding and get into competitive physique competitions, make sure that you research whatever organization that you decide to compete in whatever their requirements and regulations are, make sure that you're really familiar with those. Well, and good luck looking like Brittany. If you want to just eat salad, everyone, that's all I'm going to say too. But uh, yeah. Uh, well, yeah. And I mean, the, the, the most tragic and saddest thing and I answer I ever heard when I asked someone like why they wanted to compete was for money. And I said, I almost laughed for about 10 straight minutes and I'm just like, Oh, you poor thing. How little do you know about this world and stuff like that? So that's just a whole different topic. But I asked you these two questions and I'm going to ask you them again also, just because they could have changed. So if you were, you know, if someone walked up to you and said, you know, Brittany, we made the decision. You can change one thing about the sport of bodybuilding and everyone would go along with it. What would be one thing that you'd like to see changed? Uh, it's going to be the same answer I said last time. I want them to induct a height weight requirement for women's physique and add a lightweight bodybuilding category. If men have 212 and open, women deserve to have a lighter weight and a heavier size. I want a women's body. 212. I want to see those 212 ladies out there on the stage. 212 ladies, like, hey. <laughs> um, but ultimately, I'm still a huge fan for for a height weight for women's physique. Um, if everybody could just get on board with that, you know, I don't, again, I don't care if people are tested or people want to do anything like that. Like, we're in the IFBB and the, like, yeah. Yeah. We're not an all natural federation. So oh, absolutely. I'm not all about that, but something that would preserve the aesthetic appeal of a division. I'm all for it. Yeah. Being a six, three guy myself, I would totally not want to go on the same stage as a five foot three guy who let's be honest, when you're shorter, it's easier to put on muscle. I don't want to just spoil it for everyone. I, I'm not making any excuses, but it is like, it's just genetically and scientifically, it is easier to do that. So for the taller people, yeah, they should have their own division. I've been saying that unfortunately for women though, there aren't like, there's a, there's a, there's a few of them, but there's not really that many that are like, you know, in the five ten or five, nine above range, because they, that's rare for bodybuilding I've, I've found, but yeah, they, they could definitely have their own division if they wanted. I didn't, I didn't realize, like, I consider myself short. I'm five, five and a half, like at the most, but on stage, I'm like the tallest girl out there. Like if you look at my first lineup from Texas at our first look call out, I'm dead center. And it's just like me. And then it's like, in Arizona, same thing. Like I think, um, I think Lex might be just as tall as me, but it could just be her hair. So I'm, it, I'm literally one of the tallest people out there. But I mean, I don't, uh, I don't necessarily look at by myself, you know. And I don't realize that all these girls are in the five twos and five threes either. Yeah, like a five four or five five cutoff. Yeah, definitely should be a thing, and I'd support that, you know, as well. Especially, I've had some six footers on this podcast, and I was like, okay, good guy. Why are you even competing in this sport? Because it's just you're just asking for unfair. But you know, hey, it, I, I've always said it's more impressive when taller people are still super, super muscular to me. It's more impressive than a shorter person that's you know super muscular, just because I personally know the hardship. But when we talk to a year from now, we're not going to wait a whole full damn two years. Now we're going to wait a year from now. Yeah, where would you like to be at in your bodybuilding journey? Where would you like to be at in your overall life? What are some goals that you'd like to have achieved when we talk? to a year from today well so i'll be married so that'll be nice um and then that's hopefully by then we will be starting a house uh or have built a house by then we're hoping to start building by the beginning of the year but right now like everything's so expensive that it's like it went from like 95 dollars a square foot to like 115 and so you're just like ah! so um hopefully in that um we have decided that i'm going to go into an off season a decent off season um, maybe look at competing again in June or July. So um, let's see if we do a year from now, you know, maybe I'll be Olympia qualified or something. That'd be cool. 
Um, cause by then I'll have competed again, uh, maybe a couple of different times. Um, so yeah. So you guys just aren't going to go full Jeremiah Johnson, and just build yourself a log cabin on your family's acres. Basically that that's the way to do it really. Just... Yeah. We're, um, we're, we're not going to do a log cabin, but we definitely are doing a, um, like a little farmhouse, if you will. We were going to do a barn dominium, but at this point it's almost just as cheap to do, um, a regular house because we're not looking at anything big. I mean, we're not against kids. If we, ha if, if it were to happen, like we would be okay with it. But I mean, like I said, like I'm 38, like he's 40, we're getting kind of up there. So it's one of those things where if it happens, it happens, but I doubt we're going to be popping out like four and five kids. We don't need some five bedroom house. So just wait, she's going to be like Kate plus eight. Next thing we talk to her, she's going to be, have the, be the octoplets, but do you have any, don't you Tell me Ricky Bobby. Oh my God. I love that movie. So I always, I, I told, yeah, I quote that movie. So actually, so that's the funny story. So my family, we traveled all the time. We went to all the baseball games. when we were in Washington. That's when Talladega Knights came out in DC and we went there. Cause we just seen a baseball game. And we didn't have anything to do really. Oh, cute dog. Oh my God. What's your dog's name? His name is Utah. Utah. Oh, look at the, what kind of dog is he? He's half facial, half red Doberman. See, we got a little cavish on. Your dog would step on our dog and kill it, basically. But she's like a little eight-pound dog. But she's she was just barking because anything that moves, she barks at it. Because my mom always wanted to get the runt of the litter for some reason. I don't know why. But uh, yeah, I am yeah the biggest dog guy. So that is that is that is awesome. But anyway, so I was in DC, seeing Talladega Nights. That was the best theater going experience I've ever had. Like everyone was laughing their butt off. Everyone was having such a great time. So whenever someone brings that up, I always got to mention that. Like that was the one movie theater that I went to. And maybe it's just because I'm from the Upper Midwest, where like we don't like do anything to like stir the crowd or anything like that. So like, we're like, so we're too polite really. So like, we just like basically just like sit with our hands and our underneath our butts really. And just be like, laugh at funny stuff. But yeah, that was the first time I was in a movie theater where like people like actually engage with it and laughed and it's a good movie. Yeah. That, 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 that was great. So yeah. And again, yeah, a year from now we will have her on everyone to talk. And again, Brittany, you know, thank you so much for coming on and sharing your story with us. And, you know, I'm going to say Brittany bull for the last time because she's going to be Brittany. Brittany Cooper. Brittany Cooper, when we when this probably gets published, so I'll publish it under Brittany Cooper, everyone, just because, just to just to have it be the, the first official thing. But again, you know, Brittany, is there anyone that you first of all that you'd like to give a shout out to before we wrap things up? Um, really, just you know, every everybody, thank you for listening, thank you for caring. Um, anyways, uh, thanks for listening to Dee Dee on on the spot podcast and everything. We uh, really just um, everybody, all my fans, friends, clients, my family. Um, really huge shout out to my future husband, Jeff, because he really is like the MVP. He's dealt with a lot just with the prep. I mean, 25 weeks of prep is kind of a long time to put anybody through. That's half um, a year, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> it really is. Um, a, another big shout out to my coach, Hyacin Nasir. Um, he truly did take somebody who had not been preparing to be in prep and just really ran with me, invested a lot of time and effort into me. Um, and I really do look forward to continuing with him. I would recommend him to anybody. Um, we've got a great team going, uh, a lot of great athletes on the team, um, where, who have all supported me as well. So thank you there. And, um, just, you know, family, friends, fans, Absolutely. And I'll give a shout out to all those people as well, just because, yeah, the, it takes a village really for anything. And especially with bodybuilding, because if you ever try this by yourself, good God, best of luck to you. But again, you know, everyone go and follow Brittany on her Instagram. I'll leave a link down below. And, you know, like I say all the time, buy or beware, you will get inspired to get off that couch and stop eating those Twinkies. But again, Brittany, I mean, I cannot thank you enough for coming back on and giving us an update. I mean, I really appreciate it. And you're one of my, you're one of my favorite guests just because you are brutally honest, like a lot of other people sometimes aren't, which I really enjoy. But again, thank you so much. Dude, thanks for having me again. I really appreciate it. It's been great. Absolutely. This is Ryan Johnson, DD on the spot, signing off. Have a great day, everyone.